Agincourt is the most famous of all English battles. It shares with Trafalgar and Waterloo a special place in a nation's mythology. And of course it's also the battle at the heart of Shakespeare's great patriotic play, Henry V. It was fought almost 700 years ago. In many ways it wasn't a particularly important battle. It didn't decide any great issues and Henry was to need another five or six years of fighting to achieve his aim in France. And anyway, within a generation, the English were to lose the Hundred Years' War altogether and be expelled from France. Yet Agincourt is still famous. It's famous because something really quite extraordinary happened on that day. It was October the 25th, St. Crispin's Day, 1415. It was a very cold, wet day. Autumn was turning into winter, and a small, hungry, cold, tired, sick army of 6,000 Englishmen were trapped in Picardy. The campaign had started so well. Henry invaded France in August. He wanted to capture Harfleur, which was a small port on the Norman coast. He took over 12,000 men with him. It was a splendidly equipped army. It had cost a lot of money. The idea was to capture Harfleur within, say, two weeks, and then march on into the heart of France, hoping to catch the main French army, defeat it, and so pursue his claim to the French crown. But things went wrong. Harfleur, instead of surrendering in two weeks, lasted for over two months. And during those two months, a particularly virulent form of dysentery hit the English army. Men began to die. By the time Harfleur fell, by the time it surrendered at the end of September, Henry had lost half his army. The sensible thing now, of course, was to go home. But he didn't. He chose to stay in France. Why? Well, he'd spent all that money on this campaign. He couldn't just crawl home and say that all he could show for that money was the capture of one small port. He needed more. He decided then to defy the French. He would march through France and he would prove to Christendom that the English could march wherever they wanted in France and the French could do nothing about it. Well, that was wrong. The French could do something about it. Henry set off for Calais. It was 120 miles away. It should have taken him about eight days to get there. Instead, the French blocked the River Somme and Henry was forced to go inland to find another river crossing. And that gave the French their chance. They blocked the road to Calais. And so, on St. Crispin's Day in 1415, 30,000 Frenchmen waited for 6,000 cold, tired and hungry Englishmen. Everyone knew the English had to lose, but they didn't. After three or four hours fighting, Five to six thousand French were dead. They were knights, men at arms. They were the great lords. They were the royal dukes of France, the counts. All dead in heaps of corpses on the battlefield. Another two thousand were prisoners. And on the English side, fewer than two hundred died. It was the most extraordinary victory. It's also a most extraordinary story. I'm fascinated by those moments in a nation's history that, that, that give it myth. I've written about Stonehenge, which lies so far back in, in British history, about King Arthur, about the making of the English, about the Napoleonic Wars. All of these things are important to Britain, but at the heart of being English is Agincourt. Shakespeare's partly responsible for that, yet the battle still persists as a great story. People think of it as a story of the victory of the few over the many, of the English archer with his dreaded longbow. But it was also a story of slaughter in the mud, of the most barbarous and horrible behavior. Well, I'm inviting you to join me on the field of Agincourt, where history became legend. <laughs>